What's up guys, Jackson here at Toasty DIY, and today we're gonna to be doing an unboxing and review of the Fujifilm Instax Mini Evo. Let's go ahead and get into it. So what we have here is the Instax Mini Evo along with a 60 pack of film, which comes in around $45.99 for 60, so it ends up being less than a dollar per shot. And then of course we have the camera here, which comes in at $199.99 for the base camera, but you can get bundles on Amazon that come with other accessories, but I found that those seemed a little bit gimmicky as it'd be like a 32 gig SD card, a case, a strap, and just some other random things that you'd probably never used for an extra hundred dollars. So I'd rather part together my own camera kit um, rather than paying the extra hundred bucks, but we're gonna go ahead and unbox this camera. So the box is pretty small overall. Um, I'm really excited because they don't make a ton of these hybrid cameras. You'll notice there's a ton of digital cameras in the market. You got DSLRs, mirrorless, you have hybrids, but then of course you also have the OG style instant film cameras. And then of course the OG film cameras where you have to actually get your prints done afterwards. Now, this is an instant film camera, meaning these cartridges inside of here and it'll actually print directly off. You get about 10 shots per cartridge. And um, you know, like I said, they're not super expensive when you look at how much it costs to actually have film printed these days. Now inside the box, we do get this. This tells us about the Instax Up app. This is really cool because like I said, this being a hybrid camera, which I haven't really explained very well yet, this camera right here is hybrid in multiple ways because for one, even though it is very retro looking, it has a lot of very new modern features such as a digital display. That is one really cool feature. Instead of having to use a viewfinder to see all your photos, you actually get a pretty decent display, which you will see some of the pros and cons in this video, such as high lighting can be a little bit hard to see the screen. You also get another feature that is really cool, one that I really wanted, and that is this camera can do SD card and instant print. So you could actually put a micro SD card in the bottom of this camera, and that's also where the USB Type-C is located to charge the camera. So there's no need to insert and take out batteries or have to dispose of batteries. This actually has the battery built in and it's Type-C, which is definitely a added bonus. Um, another really cool feature too is normally this would be like your advance on an OG film camera, but this is actually the how you print the photo, which I think is just super satisfying. It even has a nice little click to it, but it's a super sleek looking camera, guys. And then the last cool feature that I'm really excited about is you can actually use the app on your phone to print photos that you've taken other places. Like if you've taken photos on your phone, you can use this as a printer essentially. Now, they are gonna be small photos, but if you're just trying to print photos, it's great. Obviously, if you're trying to print a document or something, that's gonna be a little bit small and goofy, but the fact that it has the capability is really cool. So inside the box, we do also get a neck strap, which is really nice. Uh, that was one thing I didn't think was gonna be included. And then we do get a USB type C. It's a pretty short cable, probably about a foot and a half if I had to guess. It is USB A to USB C. Um, so you are gonna need a power brick or you can just plug it straight into a laptop or something like that. But that's basically all we get. And then we get a uh, fairly short and small instruction manual. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the charger to make sure that we have a full battery. And then we're going to actually go over some of the features, take a look at the camera a little closer. And then we're gonna go out in the field and do some testing. So at this point, guys, I wanna go over some of the pros and cons of this camera because that's probably one of the most important parts when buying a camera. So the first pro, and this is a really weighted, I would call it a super pro, is the hybrid ability of this camera. The fact that you can not only take instant photos with this camera, but you can also take digital photos. So basically every photo that you take with this camera does not just instantly print. It actually saves to your SD card or to the camera if you don't have an SD card in. And then you just go into your library and basically press the advanced, how it would be on an old camera, but that's actually the print feature. It has a really fun sound to it that goes something like this. So very satisfying vintage feel and sound. And then it just takes about five to 10 seconds to push the actual print out of the camera. Super cool feature. And then of course with the app, you can even use your phone to actually print images. So you can actually find images that you've taken with your phone, not with the camera and actually print them on to the camera. Now, another big pro is of course the amount of modes in this camera. There is a hundred combinations that you can choose from between the types of film. And then of course you have a wheel here, which normally would be like a zoom or a focal ring. But in this case, it's basically just kind of a gimmicky way to change what type of picture you're taking. And then with this one up here, you can actually also go through 10 more modes uh, to where you can do different combinations up to a hundred, like I said. Another pro is the selfie mode. So you actually have another button 
button in the front that acts as a shutter button. So you can actually take the picture on this camera with either of these buttons and then they give you this kind of tiny little mirror here. But honestly, it's good enough to be able to take a selfie of you or you and a friend. Now another pro I think is the price. Yes, 200 bucks for an Insta camera may sound kind of expensive when you look at the local stores or you can go to Target, pick one up for 70 bucks, but 70 is typically the entry cost for an instant film camera without any film. And of course, that means you're just getting literally an instant film camera. And I would argue that all of the cheaper Instax ones that are just like colorful, I don't think they're very good looking. They don't really have the best sensors on them, but yeah, for 70 bucks, they're great for taking basic photos, but this camera can just do so much more that I think the extra 130 is actually very worth it. Another pro is the app. The app is actually overall pretty easy to use. Um, it's very simple and I will say that the live view is really cool. It actually almost is kind of like having a GoPro or something where you can actually use the Bluetooth and see what the camera sees from your phone so that if you want to take like selfies or you're taking photos from far away, you can actually do that. But now to go over some of the cons. So there's actually a good amount of cons, believe it or not. None of them make me think that it's not worth buying the camera, but they are there. The first con is the USB Type-C. I love that it's USB Type-C, by the way, but I hate that it is not a data transfer USB Type-C. So even though you have a USB Type-C port on the bottom for charging the lithium ion battery in this camera, which is non-replaceable, so you can't just hook your camera up to your PC or your laptop and transfer photos that way. You actually have to either take the SD card out, or if you don't have an SD card, you're basically kind of stuck to using the app, which I think is a little bit of a miss there, but you know, it's not the biggest deal. Now a con of the app is although it is simple, I kind of wish it had some more features. So one of the features that I was really expecting this camera to have with the app is since you can access photos, I figured I could just, you know, open up the app and see all of my photos there. Um, and I could transfer them to my phone so I could share them via Instagram, but it's a little more tricky. For some reason, you can only actually view the pictures that you've exported on the camera. So any of the ones that you've printed off are the ones that you can actually view. I think that's a little strange. I don't see why you can't just view all the uh, photos on your SD card or on the camera, uh, but okay. And then another thing is when you do actually save the photos for some reason, there's just not an option to like change how the photo looks. It pretty much has to be with the border around it, which I guess if you're going for only the vintage vibe and you want to have like the Instax mini look, um, it's cool. But for me, I really want to be able to take pictures of my photos like to actually show what they look like physically but then have like the full res pics because this camera is capable of doing 1920 by 2560 or something along those lines um, which that's something I'm gonna get to in a minute as well uh, so we could actually get like some okay quality for social media but the fact that it keeps it tiny like that I don't love and like I said, speaking of the quality, it is over 1920 by 1080p, but it is a very low megapixel and, and just overall very low pixel density. So honestly, I was expecting the actual pictures raw to look a little better. They're not technically raw, they're JPEG. Uh, but when you load them up onto your PC, yes, it gets rid of the borders and you can actually see the full photo. But uh, with it being 2560 by 1080, it honestly, the, the pictures don't look great. Um, I would say a smartphone is probably like at least three times better uh, picture quality than this camera can produce digitally. So I know I'm asking for a lot in a $200 camera that can literally print photos and has Bluetooth and stuff, but it would be really cool if they ever released an even nicer version of this camera, like a Pro Evo or something like that, where the sensor and the resolution's a lot higher. I'm cool with the, the prints look amazing on the little mini film. They're very detailed, very vibrant. However, I just wish that the actual JPEGs or the raw files were much easier to use be because it makes this hybrid camera feel a little less hybrid. But on the bright side, those are really all of the cons that I have for the camera. I mean, everything else for the price, I think is really good. I know some people um, complain about like the plastic feel, which I mean, it has some heft to it. And yeah, it feels a little plasticky, but I will say weirdly enough, the more you use this camera, the better it feels in my opinion. Like I feel like I've, I've felt like it's less fragile. But when you first open it, it definitely feels plasticky and fragile. And then the other complaint I saw a lot of was people saying that the screen can be hard to see if you're in the sun. I actually shot outside the other day in full sunlight and I didn't really have any issues. I think if you have the sun directly beaming behind you onto the screen, yeah, it's probably gonna be hard to see, but realistically, it's not that bad. I do actually wish there was a actual viewfinder on this. That would be really cool, like a mechanical one. So if there is really bad sunlight or for some reason you just can't see the screen well, you 
could still actually take your shots but this is really all you have so for some reason this isn't working and your app's not working then yeah you don't have any way to know what you're shooting but guys all in all i'm really loving this camera so far i really do think i'm gonna have a lot of fun with it and honestly this is my first camera that does instant shooting i have a, a good amount of background with just with um, videography not a ton with picture taking besides my phone and dslrs here and there but i'm really enjoying this so far i kind of like the uh, fun vintage challenge of it and um, i think i'm gonna really keep enjoying this and hopefully i may be upgrading soon to a couple more fujifilm cameras because i want to shoot some larger shots than the minis so uh, stay subscribed to toasty diy to see some more content like this but i hope you guys enjoyed as much as i have see you guys later peace out